Hello and welcome again to the OpenShift Commons briefings. Uh, we're really pleased here to have Aparva Dave from SysDig uh, going to give us a talk on best practices for monitoring your OpenShift pause. And I think actually that's pause is a dead word now. I think we call it a, a container application platform or a cloud application platform, but yes, pause yeah, will yes, pause, pause today. And we're really happy to have you here. And uh, it's going to be sort of a demo rich presentation, I can tell today. So um, don't worry, you don't have to go and change it right away. That's quite okay. <laughs> but I'm going to let you know. Diane. That's how we do um, this. There we go, live. Um, <laughs> live, a, a, a CI CD workflow, live. <laughs> All right. Anyways, uh, I'm going to let Aperva introduce himself and take it away. And you can ask questions in the chat. One of his colleagues, Knox, is on the chat, and we'll try and save most of the Q&A for after the um, presentation. But if you have a pressing question, please raise your hand, and um, we'll interrupt him. So take it away. Good morning, everybody, or good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are. Thanks so much for joining us today. My name is Apoorva Dave, and uh, I'm really excited to, to have you. Uh, along with this ride on best practices for monitoring your OpenShift container application platform. Uh, as uh, Diane noted, uh, I think talk is cheap, PowerPoint slides are cheap, so we want to do as much demo as we can here. So we're going to be demoing a real um, OpenShift environment, we're going to be showing you SysDig alongside of it, and really what I want you to walk away with here, regardless of whether you're interested in SysDig or not, what I'd like you to walk away with is a few key best practices that you can take and apply to any OpenShift environment to help you understand how you really operate it in production and how you get the intelligence and visibility you need to really understand what's going on. So a couple things here. First of all, um, uh, I love to talk, but I love to answer your questions more than anything else. Please, please keep firing those questions in. That'll make this much more entertaining. We'll try to answer them in line if we can, and if not, we'll uh, we'll take them out of band and we'll uh, we'll answer them offline. Um, a couple other things here. Um, we, we'll be doing a bunch of demos, and they're all live environments. So fingers crossed. I'm hoping the demo gods are with me this morning. Um, now, uh, with that, let's dig in, and uh, I want to start by just kind of pointing out that what I'm going to talk about today is actually not one big challenge, but the convergence of two challenges. Operating containers in production is a huge challenge in itself. And as we'll talk about in a moment, the technical underpinnings of containers require you to change much of the tooling around your deployment and operations process. But there's a second challenge which may not be obvious as you start fooling with containers, but if you are looking to build a true platform, uh, and if you were looking to build a true container platform, then the process by which all of your platform consumers monitor and troubleshoot their environments will be really different than what you've looked at in the past. So you bring those two uh, changes together, and uh, you know it's like it's like a little bit of a science experiment. You put the two right chemicals uh, into into your uh, you know your fake volcano, and you watch it uh, overflow, right? All right. So before we go deep into technical details, uh, so I have a I have a usual gimmick. I'm not doing my usual gimmick today. My usual gimmick is that. If you can stump me with a question, then I'm going to send you a cool T-shirt. But today, I'm just so excited to be here with the OpenShift community that I want to send everybody a T-shirt. So if you want to drop me your name and email in chat, uh, we'll make sure you get one of these T-shirts. If you give me the mailing address, great. If not, I'll just email you directly. We'll get your mailing address, and we'll send you one of these shirts. Uh, sweet. So um, as again, find the chat window. Uh, send me your name and email. This is kind of my uh, my way of also getting you to use chat first so that then you don't feel so shy asking me questions. Right on. Here we go. All right, so let's talk about the first challenge first and the second one second. Do you remember the first one? It was simply about monitoring containers. Why is it different? Fundamentally, microservices and containers, you will find break your legacy and mo monitoring and analytics tools. And this is the origin of SysDig, and we're the first company that can natively monitor any um, infrastructure, including container-based ones. 
I want to go into another level of depth here about why containers break these legacy tools. Uh, in order to do that, you have to understand a little bit about Sysdig's history. So the creator of Sysdig was one of the co-creators of Wireshark. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with Wireshark, it was or it is the premier network analysis and sniffing tool. It has about 20 million users in its open source community. And Loris, the creator, uh, co-creator of Wireshark, realized uh, as containers were coming about that there was an entirely new problem here to solve in terms of not only how you understood what's happening at the network layer, but what's happening at the application layer as well. And so he launched uh, Sysdig's open source project in 2006, 2013. You can go to sysdig.org to see our, uh, our, our command line Linux visibility troubleshooting suite. On top of that, we launched a commercial product that helps customers uh, uh, visualize, monitor, and troubleshoot a distributed environments. Uh, and that's what we sell. And um, not surprisingly, part of the reason we're here, we have deep integration with op OpenShift. We're in use at major enterprises, and we're OpenShift primed. Hooray for OpenShift. All right, so now let's go deeper. Why did Loris, when he created Sysdig, see a challenge with containers and insight into containers? And here we have to talk a little bit about what containers are and why they work the way they do. I like to think of containers fundamentally as a black box. And a black box could be really good or not so good. Black boxes are really convenient for development. This abstraction layer or this ability to wrap up individual processes inside this lightweight form of virtualization is really great for portability. Uh, it's easy to take your environment that you're running on your laptop, bring those to your cloud environment uh, or your container platform, and get the exact same experience running your container. Awesome for developers who are trying to deliver reliable code into production. But that black box comes at a cost. How do you see inside that, that uh, form of virtualization? The second big challenge is that as you move containers into a production environment, you have some form of an orchestrator typically that's moving and scaling these containers without intervention. And this is the key part, without intervention. So you don't have a human who's sitting there all the time saying, well, looks like we're getting a lot of MySQL queries. Maybe I need to triple the number of containers that we have. You don't typically have that kind of experience. You're looking to automate it further. The next step here, which I kind of alluded to, is you then have services that are built on many distributed containers. So if you're trying to understand, again, how your MySQL service is doing, that's doing a lot more than simply understanding what one container is doing. Now you have to understand what all three or what all five of your containers are doing, which, by the way, may be on separate nodes or may even be in separate physical data centers. And you may not even know where they actually are. If you're, say, the developer who's just consuming a container platform, you simply wouldn't know. So these challenges make it very, very difficult for your average monitoring tool, like last generation monitoring tool, to uh, kind of instantly give you the information you need. So while the black box is great for developers who are trying to bring new code online, when you think about the operations aspects that those developers need to deal with or the operations aspects that your DevOps team needs to do with, deal with, you need actual visibility. You need to see uh, what's running inside the container. You need to be able to aggregate across containers in order to see uh, what information is there. And you need to be able to react to not only what the containers are doing, but what your apps are doing. So, Let's talk about how we address this challenge. There are a couple ways to address it. Um, one way which, uh, it, which I'll talk about a little bit later is uh, what I call sidecar containers. And that's the idea of taking every single pod that you deploy in OpenShift and putting a sidecar container in that pod to share resources, share, share fate, and kind of do some internal networking to try and collect information. It's pretty complex. And uh, again, this is where one of uh, Loris's insights were, were when he founded Sysdig, which was there's a cleaner way to do this. And 
It's by providing a, a new form of system instrumentation that we call container vision. When you deploy a Sysdig container on a host, we can automatically tap into the system calls of that host, and we can see every single system call that every container executes. That means we can understand what the application is, what it's doing, and we can understand the underlying host resources as well as network resources. So from the single point of instrumentation, you can see app, container, host, and network. That's pretty powerful. So I'm gonna go down one more, uh, one more layer here. Uh, this is our uh, you know, hypothetical uh, host and, and operations with the Linux kernel down at the bottom. Well, you can tell this is hypothetical because it seems pretty unlikely that you're going to take a host and you're going to run a couple non-containerized apps, uh, a Docker container, a Rocket container, an LXC container. But humor me. Humor me for a second here. Okay. So uh, now we see that obviously all of these containers would be interacting with the kernel in order to execute commands whether those are accessing underlying resources or guaranteeing their own resources and uh, it's there where sysdig inserts a thin layer of instrumentation so we can see these system calls and from these system calls we can then derive a significant amount of information. We can uh, derive host, network, and container metrics, but we can also see custom metrics. That means custom metrics that have to do with how the application is performing, uh, as well as uh, things your developers have instrumented, like uh, users abandoning a shopping cart or um, you know a flag when a particular process is hit within your application or a particular function. Based on all of these system calls, we can also automatically determine what's running inside the container. So just looking at the system calls without any human intervention, we can say, oh, well, look, this is the custom node application. This is the API server. This is the MySQL database, and so on and so forth. Once we know that, we can tap into the MySQL database to collect metrics it naturally exposes. And so we auto-discover these application metrics without you having to interfere. And you can imagine the power here when you're operating in a true container platform mode where you may not even know exactly uh, what, what all is being deployed on the platform, but you, you're, you're responsible for guaranteeing visibility. So that application auto discovery process is critical to instrumentation because it's not enough in today's world to simply monitor uh, you know, container shares and host CPU. Instead, what I need to know is how well are my endpoints performing on my API server? How slow or fast are the queries to my database server? Uh, and what's going on with garbage collection in my Cassandra database? These are the types of metrics that really help you monitor and troubleshoot your environment. So here's a quick glance at uh, all of these auto discovery mechanisms or uh, auto discovery application components we have in place. Um, this is all customizable, so if you have a different app, uh, if you create a custom application, you can uh, customize Sysdig in order to collect that information as well. All right, so let's keep going here. So now we've, we've, we've instrumented the kernel. We're, we're seeing these system calls. We turn them into metrics. What do we do with them? That's where the Sysdig container in user space actually uh, comes into play here. We pipe all that data to this container on your uh, on your host where we can aggregate the information and we can send it up to our software we're running that software either as a cloud service or you can take our software on premise and deploy it in your environment uh, and that can be your cl your cloud environment or your private cloud or your data center doesn't matter to us uh, either way you get the same experience of our uh, monitoring and troubleshooting application which of course i'll be showing you in a moment uh, but the key here is we can aggregate this information across thousands and thousands of hosts, tens of thousands of containers, and deliver it to you in whatever form you want, whether that's us operating the service or you operating the software. All right, so it's time for our first demo. Uh, we're going to do a really quick instrumentation demo uh, because our instrumentation is so powerful that I love showing it off here. All right. So here's what we've got. Let me make sure my 
terminal is operating correctly. Uh, Diane, quick check, just making sure you can still see my terminal window. I can, and that font is just barely big enough. Let's let's step it up. There, you go. We, there we go. Okay. Um, all right. So while I'm uh, while I'm doing this demo, right after this demo, I'm going to stop for questions. Uh, so if you do have burning questions, uh, let's uh, let's use this as a, an opportunity uh, for you to get them into chat right now. Okay. So here is my blank environment. This is a very sad environment. There is no data here uh, to to visualize. So let's fix this. We come over here. Come over to agent installation and you see here we've got some pretty standard installs docker linux uh kubernetes uh kubernetes and openshift work very similarly here's our openshift install and we kind of just link you here we're going to do it for this uh first one we're going to do a raw install okay so um all i need, need to do is copy this docker run command come back to my terminal you can see here I've got some containers running. I've got a small WordPress application backed by MySQL database. Great. And now uh, what's happening here is uh, Docker is running and this dash D flag is basically saying run it in the background, the Sysdig agent. Now, here is one of the key trade-offs you need to make in order to get this great visibility that I described, which is we run in privileged mode. Um, that gives us access to install our kernel module and see all of the data we need to see. As I'll show you a little bit later, we can isolate this, uh, this uh, Sysdig container through OpenShift to uh, restrict and limit the exposure of that uh, to your overall team and container platform. All right, so now let's head back over here and we'll head over to Explore. And wouldn't you know it, here we go. There's my IP address. And I'm starting to see CPU memory network data from uh, this host. That's nice. Um, honestly, though, that's pretty standard, right? This is kind of what you see in any monitoring environment. Now, our Explore tab is kind of like HTOP for your distributed environment, if you're familiar with HTOP, a uh, really powerful tool. But we can drill down here and not only see a host, but we can see the individual containers. So uh, I've been talking a lot about MySQL this morning. Why don't we just continue that? Let me click on MySQL here. and you will see that let's start with an overview by uh, let's start by an overview by process here and you can see we can drill down in this individual container and see memory cpu so on but um you know what's more interesting here is this is sql right so let's click on this my sql view and let me expand this for you now we're looking at very much uh, uh, MySQL specific information. So you'll see here, you're going to see top queries by number of requests, top tables by number of requests, slowest queries, slowest tables, and even request types, select and set, and so on. So what you're seeing here is, of course, with one single instrumentation command, I'm now able to tell you what are the slow queries running within MySQL. This is a really powerful approach that our instrumentation enables. So we're able to see your container, look inside your container, understand what's running, grab the relevant data, combine that with underlying host and network data as well. All right, so that is the end of demo number one. Uh, I assume if you were in the room with me right now, you would be applauding. Either that or you would be so stunned, your, your jaw would be open and you didn't know what to say. because. I'm willing to bet you go to very few demonstrations where people actually show you the grungy process of instrumenting, uh, instrumenting a host and instrumenting containers. Diane, let's take this moment to stop and see if we have any questions. There's one question here, uh, or actually there's two. Um, and D Dale, I think, is asking, I know you can detect and display K uh, Kubernetes events. Are you going to be adding the ability to alert on specific Kubernetes events? Oh, roadmap question already. I love it. That's fantastic. Yes. In fact, I can uh, confidently say that our design and engineering team are working on the ability to alert on events as we speak. Uh, I'm sure my product manager would kill me if I gave you a date, so I will avoid that, and I will instead say it's coming very soon. 
All right. And then um, there's another one from Steve say, asking, SysDig is based on a kernel module. When we patch the kernel, do we need to reinstall the SysDig agents? Ooh, good question. Um, so we use, uh, we use a function called DKMS. Uh, which allows uh, dynamic compilation. So uh, in general, you do not have to reinstall. We'll take care of any updates that we need to. I say in general, because if there is a huge breaking change, there may be some modification we, we need or some manual intervention. That is very, very rare. All right, and there is one more. Um, oh, no, there's two more. Okay, they're coming in. Do you awesome. need predictive? credentials to get the MySQL specific specs? Ah, good question. Uh, you do need uh, credentials to get MySQL specific specs if you've set up your MySQL database that way. And uh, a relatively new feature we've added is basically a set of environmental variables that people can include as they deploy their software that allow us to access uh, the uh, credentialed container appropriately. So that's really perfect for platform as a service or container application platforms where uh, the, the operator may not have access to the, uh, you know, the container itself or the credentials uh, themselves and needs the developer or owner to provide them. All right, and there's one that Knox did answer in the chat, but I'm gonna read it out just so you, everybody else can hear it too. Is there one SysDig container per app container in the same pod, or are you deploying only one SysDig container per project? That's a super question, and in fact, it's a perfect lead-in for my instrumentation best practices here. So let's talk through this, and uh, that point is actually my second, the question raised, I should say, is my second point, which is the best practice that you should have in mind is a single container agent per host, not per pod. Um, the per pod model has been espoused by a lot of people because, frankly, it's a lot simpler for the people who are creating monitoring software. But it is a big negative, in my opinion, for people who are operating environments. The per pod model, and to be clear, for those of you um, who don't understand that, when you deploy a or define a pod in OpenShift or Kubernetes, you can define what I call a sidecar container that would be deployed with every pod. And that sidecar container shares fate with your application in that pod. That means if one of those container dies, they all die. So you, with this per pod model, you have higher resource usage because every pod needs a sidecar container. You have higher complexity because you've got increased networking through, uh, within the pod. You have uh, an increased chance of breakage. If one dies, they all die. And you have an increased attack surface. There are more containers that someone can try and hack into. So when you do that, uh, when you flip that around and say, look, I only want a single agent per host, you reduce all of these issues absolutely critical and we believe this is a fundamental best practice for for instrument instrumenting your environment the second key is that platform operators should instrument as much as possible there shouldn't be manual efforts on the part of your consumer of your container app platform consumer or your developer to have to do this instrumentation themselves and what we mean by that is when uh, containers are dropped into an environment, you should be able to automatically see the host and network metrics. You should automatically be able to tag with relevant OpenShift and Kubernetes metadata. And you should have this idea of non-intrusive collection of application metrics. Uh, and I'm gonna push this a little bit further in our next demo when I actually show you an OpenShift environment. Uh, but you know, the key is if, if in that last demo, I was the developer and I was just coming in and spinning up that, those WordPress and MySQL containers, I should be confident that the underlying uh, platform is automatically instrumented. And here's another thing, I didn't show this to you in the last environment, but I believe I can show it to you in the next one, uh, which is developers should be able to easily add custom instrumentation without regard to container placement. So again, if you've got complex per, per pod models, if you've got uh, complex requirements around how things need to be set up, then developers have to do things just so to ensure that their custom stats D or JMX metrics will exit their container and be consumed by a correct endpoint. We think developers shouldn't have to think about that at all. All they should have to do is emit the metric and the underlying system should capture those.
And not only should they capture them, they should auto tag those based on container, host, application, microservice for later analysis. So uh, that is, that's me on my soapbox for a moment, but you came for best practices. So uh, here you go, you're gonna get them. Uh, and this is the way we think about instrumenting systems. All right, so let's keep going here. Um, let's talk about uh, visualization and troubleshooting here. Uh, can, so monitoring, can we, oh, go ahead. Can we sneak in one more question on the prior before we head in down? Um, Hamid is asking if we have a scenario where we deploy a SQL container with an um, environment uh, password, um, end users may reset the SQL password. We notice users tend to do this as we have many situations where the OpenShift health probes fail due to password changes. What measures approach do we take here? A different environment with dedicated user for SysDig? Or what would you suggest? Yeah, that's a very good question. And um, so I, I believe that this is where our environmental variables for credentials come into play. So as long as the user keeps those credentials updated, you won't have that problem. Now, if they don't keep that updated, then you will have that issue but it's relatively easy to uh, keep those up to date. So that is our, um, that's our best, uh, that's our best uh, uh, step one. Step two is you can start alerting on uh, conditions which are associated with those metrics going away. For example, um, if MySQL um, connection counts drop, uh, there could be two reasons. Like one, your MySQL environment is failing. Two, we're not able to see those connections because somebody changed something in the underlying system. So you could set up that alert and have that fired back to the owner of the container who can then say, oh, what's going on here? This looks bad. Let me check it. Oh, it looks like my, um, you know, my credentials have failed and I need to reset them. Okay. And one more question snuck in. Um, yeah. Love and you it. wanted this, so I'm going to keep shoving them at you. How much overhead in percentage does SysDig approximately produce on a host? Uh, excellent question. Uh, let's see here. So we'll do two things. One, um, I'll, if I remember when I hop into the next environment, I'll just show you uh, because SysDig can monitor SysDig. Um, but in general, it's less than 5% CPU and about 512 meg of memory. Uh, the CPU is tunable, so you could go into the agent and set a lower, harder cap. And what happens is if we're consuming uh, up to our limit in uh, underlying resources, we will start subsampling data so that we don't uh, overstep our bounds because we realize that it's more important to give those resources to your application versus our agent. Okay, and there's one more. Um, it's just going to keep coming. Uh, how do developers control what information is emitted to the SysDig system? This concern is that SysDig should not be capturing sensitive customer data like credit cards, or security numbers, et cetera. Can developers scrub data that is being emitted? Uh, certainly developers can scrub data that is being emitted. Um, the, that you can, they can always mask it in their own application. Uh, and we encourage that uh, you know, for, for highly sensitive data. Um, let me see here if I have another answer to controlling that data. Um, we do have some ways within our application to turn off uh, particular forms of data collection so that uh, for customers who are very, very sensitive, uh, we can avoid collecting uh, particular forms of data. Uh, I probably don't have time to go into more detail there, but if that's a, a you know real concern, I'd say step one is making sure SysDig works for your environment, and then step two would be kind of tuning data collection. I have actually a third answer, which we will address in the demo, which is SysDig can allow you to isolate sets of data for particular users. So you can imagine that the users who work, or the developers who work on, say, your billing system, will probably actually need to access a lot more data than people who work on your API server. So can you isolate those two teams and give them access to only the right data? Uh, that's another best practice that I'll get into in a moment. With that, uh, Diane, any more questions? Let's put them on hold for a bit so that we can keep, keep rolling here. Keep going. All right, cool. All right, so you have this interesting situation when you get in a, into a container application platform, which is you've kind of got two tiers of users. You have 
uh, ops or DevOps who needs to see everything. They need to understand the entire platform, the performance of all systems at once. And you see teams of developers who need to see their services or applications and not just their containers. So how do you give developers the right level of access? And more importantly, how do you give developers the ability to collect deep troubleshooting data when you don't want to give them access to the underlying platform and resource allocation is elastic and dynamic? The developer does not actually know where their container will be running, yet they're responsible for understanding why their application is not performing the way it is. This is a really difficult challenge. And uh, we've, we've, we've needed to layer on multiple ways of thinking about data in order to solve this problem. And it, of course, all comes back to that instrumentation I was describing before. With previous instrumentation, typically you would see CPU, memory disk, a few other metrics, and it was good enough to relate to the performance of your application. After all, in kind of the static monolithic age, you had an app, it was running on a host, and uh, you know, those, those, the host and the app were intricately entwined. That's not the case anymore. And so what we needed to do is create better visibility. And it comes, up, uh, it comes out in three forms. Microservice performance management. So first of all, uh, aggregate information across the containers that make up a microservice and tell me how that service at large is performing. Number two is this idea of service-based access for teams. So if I'm the development team concerned with the API service, I probably don't care quite as much about these other services, and I don't need to be burdened with having to look through that data unless I'm troubleshooting a complex system-wide problem. And then finally, getting down to troubleshooting, how do you go deeply within this container application platform to allow a developer to see actually what's happening under the surface without just giving them the keys to the platform uh, and letting them run amok. So let's go deeper here. Uh, we'll walk through each of these. Um, all right, so you've got this environment. Here's our container application platform. Uh, so can the dev team on, uh, you know, who's covering service to the green service actually understand how the service is performing? So can you answer the question of, you know, what's, what percent of my CPU shares am I using across service two? It's actually a pretty hard question, right? And imagine this not, not being on uh, eight uh, containers, but 8,000 containers or 800 containers. Uh, that's pretty challenging. And so one of the things we allow you to do on the fly within the application is dynamically aggregate information across containers using the metadata of your service. So you can group those together on the fly and say, Okay, how's service two performing? What's the response time of my MySQL service that's currently distributed over three data centers? Or my Cassandra service? Or my Apache service? Uh, what are the slowest queries or the slowest endpoints? Uh, what are the key metrics here? And how can I view them in aggregate? The way we do this is through a deep real understand, real time understanding of orchestration metadata. And as I'll show you in a moment, as that data flows in, we tap into your orchestrator, uh, your OpenShift environment. We capture all the relevant tags for your containers and hosts and dynamically aggregate your metrics on that metadata, enabling you to answer these questions. Um, we talked a bunch about this, but in order to do that effectively, you have to auto discover applications uh, at the same time. Um, I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time in there. Instead, I'd like to talk about this idea of uh, service-based access control. Sysdig will also allow you to not only aggregate information based on that metadata, it will allow you to isolate information on that metadata. So you can isolate your prod environment. You can isolate the, the sensitive billing application to a particular team or even a particular person, or only provide access to it temporarily when you know some troubleshooting needs to be done. This is a really new functionality of uh, Sysdig, and it's highly differentiated. I think that in the old world, people were comfortable with role-based access control. Hey, I'm the director of the team, therefore I have a higher level of access. Service-based access control, however, is relatively new and is kind of a characteristic of dynamic environments like OpenShift. I'm really excited to demo this one to you. And finally, trace-driven troubleshooting. So 
I, I think plenty of monitoring tools can give you a graph that go, you know, kind of up into the right or down into the right when something's going bad. Uh, plenty of tools will also give you dashboards. It's nice to have full stack dashboards. There are a couple of interesting things that Sysday can do on top of that, which make it possible to troubleshoot faster, more effectively, even in environments where you don't have complete access. First of all, we can correlate events to your systems. This means that in addition to collecting metrics, we can capture events from Kubernetes, Docker, and any custom event that you'd like to send to our API for you to overlay them with your metric and um, understand you know, what events may have impacted the performance of your service. And then finally, we enable something very interesting with, uh, with alerting, which is called uh, capturing a trace file. So a trace file essentially gives you an entire system capture of every single system call that was happening when an alert fired. That means you can troubleshoot these containers uh, remotely, and you can even troubleshoot them after those containers are long gone because your orchestrator may kill off a poorly performing container, but you still need to troubleshoot it. How do you do that? Here's an example. Replay the state of my system last night when the auth service uh, alerts fired five minutes before I, we saw the whole app go down and show me all the system calls from all the containers that had been destroyed. Imagine doing that with one of your legacy monitoring tools. It just wouldn't happen. Okay, uh, it's demo time. Let's do this. Let's hop here. This all looks good. Make sure everything's running properly. Okay, I think we're in good shape here. Close your eyes for a moment, everybody. I need to switch dashboards. Okay. As always, keep those questions firing in. Uh, for those of you who joined late, remember, uh, drop your name and email in chat. Uh, I'm sending a free t-shirt to everyone because I'm excited about showing off this new demo environment. So here we are in OpenShift. This environment is real. It's our, uh, our demo environment here. Uh, so a couple things I want to note here. Uh, you'll notice your projects here. We've got a Java app and a WordPress app. We're going to be digging into be each of those in some detail. In the middle here, you have an interesting project, which is the Sysdig project. And it's uh, these are all the monitoring agents for the platform as a service or uh, for the container application platform. And things to note here, uh, the way this is set up is uh, you set this up as a separate project. You can then use OpenShift's, OpenShift's administrative controls to decide who gets access to the underlying instrumentation. This is super clean, super easy. It means that none of your developers need to worry about instrumentation. Your ops team can take care of it. Um, it's also deployed using a Kubernetes daemon set. So as you expand and grow your environment, it's easy to pin a Sysdig agent to every single physical host. We can drop into each of these environments. And for those of you who are familiar with, uh, with uh, OpenShift, you'll see here, uh, you know, we've got a bunch of containers running. So Cassandra, Redis, Mongo, Java. Uh, this is like a, you know, this is like a, this is like database heaven, basically. We also have a client running here, uh, which is, uh, you know, uh, which is uh, kind of giving us uh, um, a synthetic load across this application. So that's cool. Uh, of course, you know you can deploy some health checks, and health checks give you really basic information about what's going on here. All right, time to hop over into Sysdig, and uh, let me do this here. Uh, let me separate that out. Okay, time to hop into Sysdig here and uh, start examining this data. So first of all, uh, we're, we're dropped into what's called a physical topology map. This is a dynamically created map. So because we understand all the network connections in addition to your host performance, we can automatically determine who's talking to who. And you'll see here that we've got our various hosts that are, uh, that are all talking to each other in various forms. Now, uh, we have a functionality that we call Google Maps for your infrastructure, which is you can actually zoom in here and see what's running on this individual host. So this is pretty cool. I can get down to the individual container and I can drill down, frankly, even all the way into the process. Now, that's great, but this is a mess. Like, could you imagine troubleshooting? This, like troubleshooting these network connections, wow, that's crazy. And there's no real relationship here to your application itself. So instead, let me 
apply this idea of microservice performance management and use metadata from our uh, uh, OpenShift orchestrator to reorganize the containers. Now you see the Java app and you see WordPress. And let's zoom into Java. Aha, now things start to get much more interesting. here. So here uh, you can essentially see uh, you can see the Java app deployment, which is an abstract concept from Kubernetes. And you can see the actual replica sets that make up that Java application. And you can see that they're all talking to Cassandra, Mongo, and Redis. And so very quickly and very easily, we were able to reorganize this data. And now I can troubleshoot across uh, a service. Now I can troubleshoot across a replica set. Now I can understand this at the logical layer of my application and not the physical layer of my underlying infrastructure. All right, I'm going to get into a moment. In a moment, I'm going to get deeper into how we created this view and how we're able to take this uh, service-oriented view. Before we do that, uh, let's take an over overview of our Java, Java project here. And this gives you an example of uh, uh, a, a dashboard that would aggregate information across uh, across an entire service, regardless of how many containers here. You can see here, uh, we've broken up uh, request count by service. We can correlate this with events. So we can see right here, we were getting alert uh, an alert event, uh, and uh, that may help us troubleshoot very effectively. Um, you can see uh, some of the, the data we're collecting here, things like CPU shares, top namespaces, uh, most important resources consumed uh, across our service, and uh, you know, kind of, kind of this related information, file system, memory. So you're seeing everything from uh, the high level of how is the application performing, what type of requests are we getting, down to underlying resource utilization. These are our dashboard environments. You can, of course, create a um, you know, kind of uh, you know, any kind of uh, dashboards that you want entirely custom, you can use our, uh, our wizards to create simpler uh, environments as you please. Now, let's go into the Explore view. And as I was describing before, the Explore view is kind of like uh, HTOP for your entire environment. Now, up here, we see the metadata we're using to help understand our environment. So here, we're grouping things by host and then container ID. So you can see here host, and I can drill down on container ID. I can click on any row of this table, and I get that dynamic aggregation of information across whatever group I've selected. So now I'm getting an overview by process for this IP address. Very, very cool, super helpful. Um, great if you can drill down here. But again, what if instead I'd like to see this in uh, something that's more relevant to, to my particular uh, application. So instead, uh, let's do let's do this Kubernetes-oriented view here. And what's happening right now is we're dynamically re we're dynamically aggregating this information. And you'll notice this: these namespaces are akin to um, uh, these namespaces are akin to the projects we had running in our OpenShift environment. So this is cool. So now I can understand this exactly in the same way that OpenShift is describing my logical application environment. And you can see here, we have three, repli uh, we have three uh, uh, replica sets uh, for uh, this Java application. So I can click on this. And now I'm getting the aggregate of information for this Java application. I'm going to show you a couple more things here, and then we're going to stop for questions before we go into the final component, which is alerting. But what I want to show you here is, first of all, we're getting an overview by process. That's interesting, but this is Java, so let's take a look at JVM metrics. So you can see here for, for, uh, for JVM, we're collecting a heap usage, uh, garbage collection, and thread count. We're actually... Uh, this environment's pretty rudimentary, so we're not really doing any meaningful uh, uh, garbage collection here. But you can see interesting stuff like the thread count dropping off, 
uh, we're uh, you know kind of setting up alerts as we go, uh, and I'll talk about alerts in a moment. Uh, let's do one other thing here. Let's hop over to a metrics view. So since we're looking at the Java app, we may find some JMX metrics here. So let's take a look here. These are all Cassandra based. So let's do this. Let's hop over to Cassandra. In metrics. And now we can see every single JMX metric that is uh, executed by the system. The important part here is that the developer didn't have to tell or point to our agent as an endpoint for this metrics, and they didn't have to include a local polar in their pod. We automatically see these metrics running through the system calls, and we can capture them. This makes instrumenting Java-based environments insanely easy. We do a similar thing for stats D metrics, although I don't believe I have any stats D metrics running in this environment. Um, but this ability to not only get uh, dashboards, ooh, check this out, uh, I do, cool. Um, this is a stats D metric that we're, we're showing in the same way. Um, the key here is that Sysdig becomes kind of this one place where you can aggregate all of your system metrics, all of your custom metrics, all in one place, and everyone can access the right data at the right time. All right, that was a whole lot of information. Uh, I'm assuming there are some questions. There are always oh, there are questions. Um, <laughs> there are questions, and, and they're good questions. So let's see, um, let's do it LIFO. Are you able to follow transactions running through the JVM line by line? Ah, you are like asking. You code injection. Correct. Okay. I got the question. I understand it. Uh, so no, we do not provide uh, line by line transaction tracing. Uh, that is the realm of the new relics and app dynamics of the world. And uh, fundamentally, we're, we're, we're a pretty different product. Now, as the question probably came up because many of the metrics we provide start to bleed into that territory. But we do something different here. We do not instrument inside your application. We're instrumenting from outside your application. So we can provide you effectively an aggregate view of transactions as they take place between containers or between hosts, but we do not see into the individual line by line code that you have as well. So what we find is that in many cases, we provide enough APM that um, uh, customers are happy using us and because of how we're designed and designed to scale across your environment, you could deploy this everywhere in dev and prod, which is something you probably would never do with an APM product. Next question, please. All right. Um, in an OpenShift environment, could we just use the node selector to deploy a sysdig container per node, or is there a better good practice recommendation? Yeah, we do have a best practice documentation um, that uh, we've deployed on, uh, we've uh, put up on our support site. And in fact, if I hop back here for a moment, this is a slide I skipped over. Um, uh, it, the URL is down here. It's probably not super readable, but if you search for Sysdig install OpenShift on Google, you'll find it. Uh, and basically, it's a four step process. Uh, you have to modify the security context constraints, uh, install as a Kubernetes daemon set. And well, step four is you're done. So <laughs> uh, it's pretty easy. It's pretty straightforward. All right. And there, another one just popped in, and there are a bunch. And we are going. I'm. I'm just going to say right now, if you're able to run over time, I'm fine with hanging out. If we run over time, um, okay. Sometimes right. OpenShift and Kubernetes API diverges. When replica sets were added to Kubernetes, Sysdig temporarily started ignoring OpenShift replication controllers. How are you managing this going forward? <laughs> We're trying to be better, better, <laughs> more, faster all the time is our goal. Um, yeah, we're a young company. Uh, we have a big challenge, which is we do want to maintain uh, uh, functional parity between OpenShift and uh, Kubernetes. I will also say that OpenShift has become more and more important to us as a company as we've grown. Uh, we have great customers who are using OpenShift, and that gives us higher priority to continue to invest in OpenShift. So uh, I apologize for the temporary uh, divergence, and we're going to do our best to make sure that doesn't happen. All right. There's a couple more here. Um, Wahid's saying, nice to see you have Project Overview. Does it allow you to get an over, overall cluster view 
for example, a dashboard showing overall cluster view and overall nodes view? Uh, yeah, that would be really easy to create with uh, our custom dashboarding capability. Um, we also do have a bunch of um, uh, kind of overviews built here. Um, and uh, honestly, you would end up today using um, the Kubernetes uh, pre-built dashboards if you were interested and customize off of there. Um, another one, uh, you may have answered this. Is it possible to use deployment config instead of deployment? Christian's asking that. Oh, I'm stumped. You got me. Whoever right. that is, you got me. Nicely done. We'll have to get back to you. All right. In the topology view, are the plans to allow for repositioning of objects to enhance visibility when zooming in? Ah, awesome question. Um, yeah, we, we've got a bunch of plans for improving the topology view. Uh, in all honesty, we're going to do, we're doing a bunch of work to this view you see right here, the explore view. That's our next big project. And the topology improvements will probably come after that. Okay. Um, there was one, um, does Sysdig find the bottlenecks in the app pinpointed down to the line of code? And I think that's the same as the transaction. Yeah, yeah so Correct. we can do that. Um, and the other one that I think someone answered for him, uh, what was the Kubernetes tool that allows you to make sure it deployed on all the compute node hosts? And somebody answered Damon set. That's great. Cool. cool. All right, all move right. on. <laughs> yeah, let's move along. Um, we're, we're close to the end here. I think we'll be roughly on time uh, and then I can stay late for q and I love answering questions. But we talked about this idea of um, uh, data security and kind of isolating data so that the right teams get to look at the right information. There are actually two benefits to that. One, um, it, sure, there's a security benefit, which is if you've got a sensitive app, you don't want everybody to have access to it. You may not want everybody to have access to your prod environment. Um, but there's also a troubleshooting benefit. If you get dropped into a huge complex monitoring tool and there's a lot of data and you're trying to firefight and solve a problem, it's, man, it's messy, right? You don't understand what's going on. You don't really understand what the makeup of somebody else's app is and how you see it. You really wanna be able to focus down on your data and the relevant data. And that's where we built a functionality that we call Teams. Teams gives you service-based access control. So using the same metadata we use to group information into logical components, you can isolate data based on those cases as well. So you can see up here, we're in the default team. The default team is essentially the platform view, meaning I can see everything, but I can switch teams. And we've got a couple teams here. We've created a Java team and a WordPress team. So let's do this. Let's go into the, actually before I do this, let, let's, Let's reaffirm here. Um, so we've got, I'm gonna shrink this a little bit. Okay, so you can see that we've got this Java uh, um, namespace and we've got the Sysdig namespace and we've got this uh, WordPress demo namespace, okay? Um, and so now let's go into the teams here and switch to the Java team. Give this a moment. The system is ensuring uh, that I can access this team. Uh, they're ensuring what metadata is relevant to this team. And what's going to happen here is we're going to shrink down this environment. Uh, come on, you can do it. Uh, we can shrink this down into just the Java team. Ah, oh, you're killing me. The, the demo gods are telling me my time is up. Oh no. Had to happen, right? Um, We'll give it a quick refresh here and see if it's my Wi Fi connection. Yeah, it's there probably. We go. Try this again. Okay, so now let's let's try this again here. We, we want to view this as uh, the Java team. Okay, we'll try it one more time. If we don't have any luck, we'll call it a day, but it looks like it's happening. Uh, great. So now let's do this. We're going to do our regrouping again. We're going to apply this. And we're missing the group information here. Uh, what's really going to happen? Swear, brand new feature, by the way. It's actually live later this week. 
uh, aha, finally, is now you see the only thing we can see is the Java application demo. And now as a Java user, Java team user, I only have access to this information. This includes all relevant dashboards and all relevant alerts. So I'm able to scope down your environment based on the same metadata that OpenShift and Kubernetes use in order to give control and, and insight into the right people at the right time. This is service-based access control and is a critical part of deploying a monitoring product that works properly with your, uh, your container application platform. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. One last thing here we want to do, which is we want to set alerts. That's about the only thing we haven't shown here. You can set alerts from anywhere uh, in the application, whether it's Explore or it's the dashboards. In fact, we'll hop back to the dashboards here. Go back to the default team. Actually, you know what? We'll stick to Explore in the interest of time. We'll do one thing here, which is uh, we're going to set up a service-based alert. So. Uh, honestly, if you had to get alerts on individual containers, you'll probably kill yourself. And instead, the way to think about this is how do I alert on an aggregate of containers? So here you can see, uh, I won't go into the whole alerting process, but you can aggregate across any tag or metadata in your system. So here I'm saying, give me an alert across Java app demo and where the replication controller is Cassandra 1. Let me kill this. Now I have an alert across my entire Java app demo environment. One alert that could service that whole environment. In, uh, I could also segment that alert. So I could say one, uh, I could create this one alert and have one per, per replication controller or replica set, uh, one per, per deployment and one per namespace, so on and so forth. You can send those notifications anywhere you want. And finally, uh, you can create Sysdig captures. And so we, ha we didn't really have time to go into this, but as I mentioned earlier on, we have the ability to not only um, you know, capture uh, information about uh, your uh, information about uh, you know, the, your kind of standard metrics that are performing, but we also give you the ability to then download to your laptop or to another machine a system capture file. And these files can be very, very large. This one is a massive file that runs across an entire Kubernetes environment and captures data across an entire namespace. And now I get in inside the open source Sysdig tool, I get the ability to troubleshoot each and every process down to its arguments, down to its connections, down to its payloads. And this is something that no other uh, monitoring tool can provide you and no other monitoring tool has the ability to give you this view into your container application platform. So um, you can see that you could spend a ton of time looking at this fantastic data uh, just in the interest of time. Uh, I, won't, I won't go into that now. That's probably a whole other session uh, uh, for you. Well, so very quickly in terms of wrap. We'd love to have you come back and do another whole session again. So this is pretty <laughs> good. Thank you. Um, just very quickly, uh, you know, while Sysdig, we exist because we love tech. We also need to make money along the way. So we sell a couple products. I wanted to tell you about those. Uh, Sysdig Cloud is our hosted offering um, where uh, you, know, you can do an individual host all the way up to thousands of hosts, monthly or annual. Sysdig on-premise, it's the same product, but then you, you take our software, you run it in your environment. It's annual only with a minimum commitment. And Sysdig open source, man, we love troubleshooting Linux systems. And that's what Sysdig open source is all about. Sysdig.org, check it out. And um, we also love free trials. So come onto our website, we'll give you a free trial. You can see this kind of core functionality that I was talking about from viewing microservices all the way down to keep deep container visibility. Uh, we've got the goodness for you. I would love to interact with you directly and get you running on a trial. So just come to sysdig.com and we'll get you started on that. All right, there are, there's a couple of questions. One somebody might have answered himself, but let's see. Um, if you have time, can you explain a little more about service-based access control versus RBAC? Yeah, sure. Uh, I would love to. And this is this is really new functionality for us, so I'm happy to clarify. Um, Role-based access control typically happen based on a person. And 
Service-based access control happens on the intersection of a person and an environment. So if I hop over here to settings, uh, you can come over here to teams and I can show you how you define a team. So if I click on the Java team, see here, okay. So within the Java team here, we're doing a few things. We're determining whether the information is scoped uh, based on a host or container. You're determining what that scope looks like here. And that scope, this is the important part, the scope is defined by metadata of your system. This is the service in service-based access control. Your service is defined by some scope of metadata. It could be something like dev prod. Uh, it could be something like um, you know the the Java uh, deployment. It could be down to a replica set that you care about. That's that's for you to decide. And then finally, you can determine what users actually are allowed inside that team. And so you create this team based on a service, and then decide which users have access to. Hopefully that helped answer the question. I think so. You answered it for me. Um, we're running slowly out of time. And here's one sort of out of, I think, out of left field. Um, can Sysdig install and monitor database such as MySQL running on VM host of OpenStack? Oh, that is uh, out of left, left field. field. That is left field. <laughs> yeah. So um, it should be able to. Uh, that should be perfectly fine. Uh, I can't say that I've tried it myself, but uh, there's nothing that would block us from doing that. We'll get a we'll get some RDO up there and, and make you try it someday. Yeah, right. uh, and there's one more coming in. What about monitoring monitoring of Ceph cluster nodes in an OpenShift environment? And secondly, is it possible to get metrics on bandwidth, i.e., which containers are generating the most traffic, etc.? Um, sorry, no, he's just apologizing for already asked it, but you don't think it's been asked. Um, so uh, I missed the last part. Let me start by answering the first two. So what about Ceph? Uh, that's a great question. It seems like a softball to me because we just published a three-part <laughs> series on monitoring Ceph in OpenShift environments. So go to sysdig.com slash blog, and it'll be right at the top of the blog roll. But we do a killer job monitoring Ceph. Yeah, uh, yeah. What was this? Uh, I forgot the second question well, already. Just a little Did bit about cluster nodes as well. So do you have, are you going to write a cluster series um, to Ooh. follow up? That sounds like a request. I like yeah. it. Right. Um, uh, sure, we will. Not exactly sure when, but we will. Uh, in terms of bandwidth, uh, absolutely. I believe it's on our um, network overview. Um, so you can see you can see the actual uh, consumption of bandwidth. We don't track what your say bandwidth limits are or anything like that. Um, but that would be relatively easy to do. Uh, but fundamentally, we do have uh, network data. And right now, I'm showing this across the, um, uh, you know, the, the replica set here. Um, I could drill down all the way into an individual container. And I could show you um, CPU. You, oh, this is CPU used metrics. Let's go in, back into network here. This will be your network data for that individual container. So. Easy peasy. All right, that was easy. Here's one more. Um, are you monitoring all of the compute node host performance also? Um, yes. It would, be, it would be great to see the performance of our OpenShift cluster as a whole and what applications and services are taking the most resources. And I think that's our last question. Yeah, sure. So what I've been showing you primarily have been um, service-oriented views, but uh, you know, kind of the reason we do that is that uh, Basically, people expect us to be able to monitor at the physical layer, uh, and we can absolutely do that. So in fact, going all the way back to where we started, I can switch this view to a physical view. And so this physical view now tells me the individual hosts that are running this environment and the aggregate utilization of file system, CPU, network, and memory. You can drill down to individual containers. So the beauty of Sysdig and you know what we described early on is you have to be able to tag metrics in many, many different ways so that as you come in to troubleshoot an environment, you can slice and dice it however you need to. This is what we do. This is a fundamentally different approach to monitoring than other systems provide you from an interface perspective. And it's part of what makes Sysdig so powerful. Okay, and someone snuck one more in. Um, right. He's asking, does Sysdig have an, an endpoint API? Is it possible? get the data by accessing an API, getting raw data from the dashboard, for example. 
Yes. Uh, we do have APIs. They're fully functional. Pretty much anything you can do in the app, you can do via our API. But whenever I whenever I hear that, I say, why would you want to go somewhere else? With your data? <laughs> That's probably a good one. And I'm guessing um, you all will be at um, KubeCon in Berlin, or someone from Sysdave will be there. We um, will be. Uh, we, we absolutely will be at KubeCon uh, in Berlin, and we'll also be at Red Hat Summit in okay. um, May. So we're looking forward to both of those events. Perfect. Well, um, we're going to be hosting an OpenShift Commons gathering the day before. Um, we always do that at KubeCon, and we would be thrilled to have you guys come. Uh, I put a little uh, free promo code for anyone who's attending this briefing to join um, and join us the day before. The beer will be good, and there'll be talks from uh, project leads and folks from all the different upstream projects from Google and Microsoft. And um, we'll definitely have one of the SIGs tables be at lunchtime, be monitoring, and we'd love to have you guys come and um, answer questions there face to face. So um, let's see, right so much. There's, there's, Knox answered a question uh, and everybody's saying this is great and applause, applause. And, and really um, we'll, we'll have to rinse and repeat and do this again. Um, in another few months, because um, I'm sure you'll have more features to show off. And um, Knox put in something um, that I haven't heard about before around some security offering that you have as well called Falco. So, yeah, um, yeah, that's a good point. So uh, just a quick note on that, um, which is uh, we recently open sourced a new project called Sysdig Falco. And if you go to sysdig.org slash Falco, you'll learn all about it. It's a security monitor for containerized environments. And so you can easily uh, detect anomalous behavior like a container spawning a shell or a container accessing sensitive files uh, and then alert on those behaviors so that you can uh, troubleshoot and solve problems before they become really big issues. Awesome. Well, thank you both Knox, who's being the silent partner in the Q&A and Aperna. This has just been um, an awesome session and we should have the video up by Monday. Uh, and so if you put your last slide up, could you put an address up for someone to send an email to fire additional questions? Uh, I actually didn't, but um, if you do have any additional questions, you can always hit us up on Twitter at Sysdig or uh, info at Sysdig and we'll be happy to answer. Here, avoiding the spam. All right, there you go. Okay. well done. All right, guys, um, I will capture all the chat and send it off to you. And we will be hopefully drinking a beer together in Berlin sometime very soon. All right. Thanks so much for hosting. We really appreciate it. All right. Take care, guys.